finding the square root of a complex number. So, as you might have seen in my video about finding the arc sign of a complex number, I had to use two formulas, the for one formula for the square root of a complex number, another formula for the natural log of a complex number. These are both pretty useful formulas to have when doing you know, this sort of stuff. So, I'm going to start with the harder one, finding the square root of a complex number. So, let's see. A plus bi. We have a plus bi equals x plus y squared. So we can conclude that the square root of this number, this complex number, a plus bi equals x plus i y. So there we have that. And now you can say a plus bi equals uh, x squared plus plus 2xyi, just doing the multiplication, and then minus y squared, this equals x squared minus y squared plus 2xyi. Now this is where it gets interesting. So we have a and we have x squared minus y squared. Now these have to be real, so we can say this is real, or here I'm just gonna do re for real real and then we have the imaginary part or I am and then we have this I am in RE so we can conclude that a equals x squared minus y squared and that b equals 2xy so now we can write that let's see now we can write that a equals x squared minus b squared over 4y squared. Cause this is because if you solve for y here, you get y equals b over 2x. So yeah, that's where we plug in. So we have b squared over 4, or 4x, four 4x four squared, I mean. Yeah, 4x squared. And now, all I have to do is multiply by 4a, so we get 4a squared equals, uh, no, 4x squared, so we get 4a x squared equals, multiply by 4, yeah, multiply by 4x squared, so we get 4x squared times, I'll write this out, x squared here, we could do that in a different color maybe. X squared minus B squared over 4X squared. This equals, so now we have, oh, and here we have 4, actually, here I'll write this, I'll do this in black. 4X squared by A right here. So this equals 4x squared by x squared equals 4x to the fourth. And then we have 4x squared and 4x squared cancel out. So we get 4x to the fourth minus b squared. This equals 4ax squared. And now we can sort of subtract some terms. So to get zero, we need to do zero equals 4 x to the fourth, then we have to subtract the 4ax squared, so we have to do minus 4ax squared, and then minus b squared equals zero. So now we can, this is where it's also really nice, we can write this as 4x squared squared minus 4ax squared minus b squared. This is equal to zero, so this is a quadratic you have x squared as in like the part that's being squared and then we have just have x squared alone and then we have just a constant at the end right there. And now we can use the quadratic formula. I'm gonna erase this so I can have, so I have more space. Now we can use a quadratic formula. 
I, I proved some way I derived it using two a's in the last video so we get negative negative 4 plus or minus the square root of b squared so negative 4 a squared minus 4 by 4 and then by negative b squared this all over 2 by 4 so this equals let's see 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 a squared minus or plus I mean 16 b squared where the minus and minus cancel out and then we can write this and then over 8 and we can write this as good thing we have 16 so we can write this as 16 here write it in green 16 times a squared plus b squared so you can write this as square root of 16 is 4 so 4 plus actually 4 plus or minus 4 this 4 times the square root of a squared plus b squared over 8 and this equals let's see divided by 4 we get 1 plus or minus or actually oh wait 4a 4a and then we get a plus or minus uh, uh, let's see wait minus 4 by by C okay and now we get yeah we get a plus or minus because we have to divide by 4 New range not later, so plus or minus the square root of a squared plus b squared all over two. And then remember this equals x squared, so that means x equals plus or minus the square root of a plus or minus the square root of a squared plus b squared all over two. So now So now we have x, and to get y, if you remember, we have erase that a plus bi equals actually yeah. So now we have x. So I think to get y, we should just um. Here, let me see. Two times y equals b over 2x. Okay, so if you remember, we have y equals b over 2x. Now we can plug in x, so this equals b over, you multiply that by 2, so plus or minus 2 times the square root of that. So plus or minus 2 times the square root of a dot, which equals b over square root of 2 is, f or no, two, the square root of, or 2 equals the square root of 4, so we can just do this, you could say plus or minus square root 4 times the square root of this stuff, so then we get plus or minus the square root of, let's see, Multiply that by 4, so we get 4a, we got to put in parentheses, 4 by a plus the square root of a squared plus b squared. And then over 2. And this equals b over the square root of 2 by a plus the square root of a squared plus b squared. We need this, and this equals, so this equals y. And, 
Let's see. Um. Okay. So this equals y, and now we have oh, the square root of a plus bi equals x plus iy. So now we can write this as x plus iy equals plus or minus the square root of a plus or minus the square root of a squared plus b squared all over 2. And then we have plus i times, we have a plus or minus over here, so it's really plus or minus i, move that over there, plus or minus i times this, put this in parentheses, b over the square root of 2 by a plus the square root of a squared plus b squared. And that should give you an idea of how I got or there, how I got the formula for the square root of a complex number. So now we're gonna find the natural log of a complex number. So you might be familiar if you have a complex number z, z equals a plus b i, so we can write z, say z equals r times e to the i theta. This is exponential form, or you can write it as r times cosine theta plus i sine theta. Theta is just the angle it makes. This equals... Uh, so we're going to use the exponential form for the natural log, because now all we have to do is natural log of r times e to the i theta and this equals natural log of r plus the natural log of e to the i theta. So it's pretty easy now. Oh, and also r, I'll write it over here. r equals the square root of a squared plus b squared. It's not plus or minus, just positive because it's the absolute value of a complex number. And the absolute value can't really be negative. Distance can't be negative. So anyway... This is this equals r. So, using properties of logarithms, we have natural log of the square root of a squared plus b squared plus ln e to the i theta. Just ln and e uh, cancel out because it's like log base e of e to the i theta. E to the x equals e to the i theta. So, x equals i theta, if you don't already know that, just a refresher. And we have natural log of a squared plus b squared to the one half. So this can be written as one half ln a squared plus b squared. And then, hold on. And yeah, so pretty much now we have a L, one half ln a squared plus b squared, and then plus i theta. And if you don't already know, theta is defined as the arctangent of b over a. Remember, we have z equals b, a plus b i. And this is a really easy pr sort of proof for this, because theta is pretty much meaningless unless we have an actual like trigonometric definition for it, which we do. So yeah, tang arctangent of b over a. So here, just basic trigonometry. We have, this is like, this is, here, I'll write, I'll write it like this. Real, imaginary, and then we have, okay, we have, let's say we have one, two, three, and then we have one, two, let's do three plus two i is 3 plus 2i that the, the number 3 plus the complex number 3 plus 2i identifies with that point so obviously here we have a right triangle remember this point and then we have of course we have some angle over here so what is this angle so we will call this angle theta 
And how do we find this angle? So obviously we have, or obviously you have a plus bi, or actually I'll use here I'll use x plus i y because I already have a and b over there equals three plus two i. We have real value of x plus i y equals three. An imaginary value is two x plus i y equals two. So here we have like the here we have the real value which is um, just three. So basically the length of this is three and the length of this is two. And um, so, oh, and that's also how you get the distance, just the square root of a squared plus b squared, three squared plus two squared, just the Pythagorean theorem. But anyway, we have tangent, remember tangent of tangent, here I'll just write tangent of x equals Opposite over adjacent, so ka to a, opposite over adjacent. So we have the opposite of, the opposite is here. So that means arctangent is going to be adjacent over opposite. So that means arctangent. So we, here we have, um, so we have x equals tangent to the we have x equals tangent to get rid of that of adjacent over opposite. So adjacent is three over two. Um, and then here uh, opposite opposite over adjacent adjacent over opposite. Okay, so we have. Here, let me just redo this. So we have t tangent to the negative one of theta equals not opposite over adjacent, but the inverse. So here, actually, tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent. So this equals b over a. And now to find theta, we just do the arc tangent. So tangent to the negative one of tangent, that sort of um, they sort of like cancel out. So this is theta. We have arc tangent of b over a. So that means conclude that theta equals arc tangent of b over a, which is right here. And so now we can write this as same thing, one half ln a squared plus b squared, that's the real part. Plus i times the arc tangent of b over a. So there we go. Yeah.